We had a request from someone who is using our video story about putting in our kitchen countertops to get the courage to do their own and actually some pointers and ideas as they're trying to solve problems like us, not knowing everything that we need to know, but gonna do it because <laughs> we're gonna do it. What I wanna show is how we're doing the, the biscuit joining. I, I'm not a biscuit joining professional. I happened to, a few years ago, have been fortunate enough to acquire a gadget that does the cutting of the biscuit holes. Um, so I'm going to show my techniques for, for what I do. There's my gadget. This is the gadget. It's pretty cool. It does all the work. I'm going to start by making lines on here where the biscuits are going to be joining together and I'm going to make a line across the boards this way and the reason I'm doing that I'm going to give it enough space here straight across so those lines is where, are where it's going to join so I'm going to show you how I use those lines in a bit but I'm going to put the biscuit joiner in here the biscuit joiner in there and these lines line it up so that when we put the biscuits in and put these together it all fits like it's supposed to we want to do a few of them on here Probably more than what we really need, but that many ought to be enough to really do the trick. So next I'm going to remove the board that's still loose, set it aside, I'm going to put the holes in it separate, and I'm going to put the biscuit holes in this, then in this one, and then we're going to join them together. Why don't you show him them the biscuits? I'm going to do that. Can you see the 20 on there? There's a 20 on there. Can yep. you see it? Yep. Okay. These are the biscuits that we're using. They're, they look like, yeah, she wants to eat them. She's hungry. Uh, they look like little wafer kinds of things. Uh, they're kind of a, like, they could be made out of wood. These I think are made out of some other very hard material. Composite. Kind of a composite of stuff. I have what's what are uh, described as number 20s. They have number 10s and then several other sizes, but the 10s and 20s are most common. I'm using the 20s, which are larger because of the size of the wood, that were the thickness and, and just the heft that's there, so that they work out better. Which means I have to set the the gadget to where it's punching holes the right depth, uh, which also affects the width, so that these fit in. And what you want them to do is to fit in just to where they can go just a little bit past halfway. And, and I'm sure folks who really know how to do this would tell you specifically this many sixteenths and so on and so forth. But you, you don't want them to be so shallow, the holes to be so shallow, this can't go in far enough that it causes a gap in here when you try to put them together. They want to be able to go together really tight, but you don't want it so deep that it goes that one side is barely connecting. So I'm going to punch the holes and then show you how the rest of it goes. I want to show a little bit of how this works and I'm sure that different biscuit joiners may do things differently. Can you see that I'm lining up the line with the red dot on there so that... The middle dot. Yeah, the middle dot. So what happens is... You can't see the line, really. Okay. Trust me, there's a line there. So this is setting there, and what happens is when I push in here, that blade comes out. That blade's going to be spinning, and I have a little stop set so that it stops at the depth I want it to stop at. I'm going to use the vacuum here to gather up the chips that we're going to create, because we will create some wood chips. So this is the little hole that it made right here and right here. And the biscuit goes into that, you glue it, you stick it in there. Half of it's coming out. Then you do the same thing on the other wood and boom, they go together. You glue all the way around here and they go together. 
So I've put a biscuit in each one of these and he has cut a hole in each one of the others. So we're gonna fit it in there to begin with before we put any glue or anything. Lift up maybe. Started, um, I started putting the mineral oil, food grade mineral oil, on our countertops today. And I want to show you the difference. I have the first coat on, and I know it soaks in, and then you do about four or five or six more coats. <laughs> but So this is what the plane looks like. This one hasn't had it done to it. And this one has. Look at how rich it brought out the grain. So, so beautiful. So we sanded these. We've put putty, wood putty that's very smooth in between everything. Um, We've sanded them, we use the tack cloth, fun stuff. The time has come to put in our sink for good. We had one of our viewers, Eric, thank you very much. I appreciate your comment. He said, if you put down mineral oil around here, then the mineral oil isn't going to allow the silicone to work and we hadn't thought of that. So, right around the sink, right barely where that is all going to be touching and where this is going, we did use polyurethane. It's gonna be covered up, it's not where any food is, and we've put on three coats of that, so that will help waterproof this area. I'm gonna hand this baton to you. Mm -hmm. I've already pulled it. So hopefully it works. This is a 100% waterproof. It's GE. Um, it waterproofs within 30 what minutes. Is GE? That's the brand, General okay. Electric. Um, it's a silicone. It's actually from Walmart. It is the best caulking we have ever used. It just is nice caulking. Need to come on this side more. Okay, we're gonna have to wipe around some of the edges here. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna get something to wipe there and then I wanna make sure that we're straight. Okay. Okay, this needs to come this way just a little. Confirm. Did you get it? Get that anymore. Beautiful! And you're putting the man putting the clips on? The clips are going on. Alright. Guys, look how pretty these are. They're black to go with the the gray that's already here for the sink. And it has a um, gold, bronze, what is it? I don't yeah, know. I call it gold. Pure anyway. Gold. Pure gold. Oh man, that looks awesome. That is sweet looking. You gotta see this. See how pretty that is in there? As promised, I'm taking you with me when we open up our faucet. We have it. We haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> we got it off of Amazon. So here we go. Oh, 
another box. Another box. You want to take that one? Look that, Oliver. That's what we needed, more boxes around here. I wasn't trying to get you. I was just trying to push the box over there. Now, we may be sad that we got black innards and we have silver outers, but I'm, I'm I really sad. like the black innards. No, what is this? And affording us a black county is a lot more expensive. And guess what? Those things are replaceable. Look at this. So this comes out, shh, spray, and hooks back in. One thing. There you go, hon. That's it. That's all I got. So, um, $69 at Amazon. I will put the link below. And we need some other stuff to put it on, do we not? This doesn't look like it has everything. You know what? There is stuff underneath here. You're going, wow, there better be because there's a whole bunch missing. <laughs> here you go. Here's screws. Here's your little, oh, you, here's this. And this. Oh, good. there is more stuff. And we hope you enjoy your purchase. All of our products are strictly tested before leaving the factory. Ta-da. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Not sure if this is a new way for hooking up faucets or if it's a European or Swedish way of doing it, but these inlet pipes, they screw in to it the way the fit Hand so. screwed. They hand screw, you don't tighten with a wrench. This is what will go on to the fittings that we have down below we'll have to match up with. This little ringlet, it has some fittings that it sets inside of this nice and sturdy and then it's got a gasket on the bottom. That goes in. And then what I'm not sure of is if our hole is the right size. If it's not, we're going to be drilling a larger hole. Oh, please. Those go through there. That seems to fit there. I'll hold it. You'll hold that. Oh Next my is. Word. Is that gorgeous or what? She's liking the look. <laughs> Next is this gasket will set up against it. This will set up against the gasket as a washer of sorts. These go through, there's one on each side of this, and then there are holes in the bottom of the faucet assembly and these screw into that. Thank you to everyone who have given us suggestions. I, I have to admit I haven't taken all the suggestions. Some of them came a little late. I'd already blown through that particular task part that you were making suggestions about, but I really appreciate the input. Giving me insights, even though I can't use them on this sink, many of them, there are other times I know I'll get to use them. But despite all of that, and despite some of the non-standard ways that we've done things, we now have a sink that is not leaking and is working. Rinda can show you. Saturday, the 26th of January. <laughs> we have a sink with water. Yes! <laughs> and a dishwasher that works connected to it and no leaks underneath. When I took the kitchen apart, I said I'd have it back together by Saturday. I didn't say which Saturday. Well, you kind of did. But <laughs> no, no, I didn't. You did. By the time she gets home, you said, shall I just walk in the door? Yeah, yeah time to walk in the door. <laughs> it, was, it was a week shy of two months. Okay. Our kitchen is still very raw, but we are going to do a 360. Now, when you see this, you're going to go, oh, there's still so many things undone. And, and that is true, but there is so many things not done. This was just piles of, you know, the tools and things like that. Uh, this right here, you want to stuff right here? This isn't done yet because this is where the electrical outlets boxes are, and this has all got to get moved. We've got to redo all the electrical. We have a friend who's going to help us with that, and we're going to be putting it out in the garage. So, now this 
is my beautiful sink that my beautiful husband did. We learned a lot. We did a lot of things our way because we because there were re everything we did it had to do with the choice we made based on what we had, what we knew, what the circumstance was, and if there were mistakes, there were mistakes, but it, we're going to live with the mistakes. Uh, but we're happy with it. It's, it's looking great. It's coming together like we hoped it would. And now we are finally back to where we're a little bit more civilized than we've been as far as how we're living. You guys, I have water in my kitchen and a dishwasher that works. This is amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I keep walking to the bathroom to go get water. <laughs> We've, we've been so disoriented because we keep changing where things are and where we're doing different tasks and it's really confusing. We're back to normal. So we have one cupboard that we put back here and he's going to build um, a shelving unit where the plates stand up and go like that. Those are all going to be right there. So really easy to get the dishwasher, open it up and put them right there. Um, this one is in, this one is not in, and it won't be in for a while. Uh, it'll, yeah. And then we're going to build another one of these right here. And then over here. So this is one of our fun next projects in the next, meaning next, um, that we're going to put um, pine wood that um, trim trim around the windows and that'll be really nice and we will do a video on it because we're so excited to do it and then we're going to be putting shelves up here instead of cupboards um, I love the open feel and I do have nice dishes and so I have lots of bowls and and picture pictures of you know, different from all over, from Germany and everywhere. So, Jim, come here. I wish you could all have a husband like me. Because <laughs> he's so awesome. And we have so many people that say, I wish my husband could do that. I wish my husband could do that. You did have a lot of people whose husbands can do that and more. Too. And more. And, and you do it different and you may do it better and that's okay. Um, we are super happy, super happy. We still have the floor to do. We have to pay for it as we go so, so that we do it paying for it as we and go. And for those of you who are concerned that we're just go, go, go. Yes. We've committed to take our anniversary week and not go fast, to take it easy, do a lot of fun things, take some time to get our heads together, do that emotional wellness thing with ourselves to decompress. I mean, you know, animals still need taken care of. There's a lot of things that still have to happen, but we're not going to be pushing ourselves to get. I may, I may paint, continue painting these covered doors. That's not a big deal, or I may not. But we're going to have some downtime, and this is thanks to us knowing we need it, but Lois, reminding us, Wilson, <laughs> same last name as us, reminded us that we need to take some time. And so we're taking some time. Great time of year to do it. Uh, I mean, there's nothing other than what we make up. I mean, this kitchen had to get to this point. There were things that have to get done. And we're really concerned about the electrical. It, it's a high priority. There are some issues. Uh, potentially dangerous. It's been that way for a long time. It's uh, just that we just had it pointed out to us. <laughs> but it's, it's not as big a priority as the things that we've already accomplished. So uh, it is next though. Yeah, it's next. It's the next big one that's got to get taken care of. Yeah. Well, we uh, will do some videos that aren't just kitchen. We appreciate your following us on this journey and uh, it has taught us to appreciate the little things in life. And we know that there are several of viewers out there and homesteaders who are making sheds into homes 
remodeling and they're doing their dishes in the bathtub too, it will come. Keep at it. Thanks for watching. Bye.